Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming here so early. Are you not tired from yesterday? That's good, because we still have two days to go. So, hi, my name is Amanda Cavallaro, and please allow me to share a bit of my story with you. Maybe some of you share some similar things, maybe your story is completely different, but that's okay, so we can understand how our stories connect. So, a little about me, I am a Google Deve Developer Expert for the Actions on Google and Google Assistant, and I work as a software developer and community advocate at resolver.co.uk. So, just an icebreaker before we get started. What was your favorite game when you were a child? Was it maybe a physical game, an online game? Cool. So, these are some of the games I used to play when I was a kid. Did any of you play with them? Can I have? Cool. So I think they were very important to build the person I am today. The first one, Lego. So I could think of a project, let's say project I wanted to build, and I could just have that uh, creativity moment, and then I could build it. The second one we have here, do you remember the brick game? So I could just like press some buttons and see the changes I was doing in the screen. And the third one, I also learned, learned how to deal with some disappointments, because sometimes I used to play with my Tamagotchi for days or months, but then I had to pull the needle and kill it, because technology not always works the way we want it to. So these games really help us. But how can kids and family have fun while playing games? Because my examples were just playing alone. These are some of the games I used to play when I was a kid. Can I hear some names? Do you know these names of games? Doom. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Give me names. What else? Yeah. We still have some to go. I was super scared of that one. Do you remember it? So this was when I used to bond with my family, because when all these games came out, I was like six. So I remember like having my sister and my dad play with me, and some of them I would like just cover my eyes and have. So it was a bonding time. And I remember my dad bought a joystick, and I remember going to school and telling everyone, I have a joystick. I don't play with my mouse. That was super awesome. Oh, sorry. But nowadays, how can kids play? Maybe they don't have access to those games I said anymore. So if you go online, you have amazing resources such as Scratch. Do any of you know Scratch? Excellent. We also have uh, some, so this is a screenshot I took from the Google Assist Assistant directory. These games were built by people like you. So you alongside your kids or the people you know, you can create actions that other people can benefit from it. So you can see some of, of these games are very educational. And just at Google I.O., they, they also uh, just announced some, something called Pretty Please, that now your kids, when they're talking to the, let's say, to the computer, to the machine, they can say please. And they say, oh, that's very good. You're a very polite person. So cool, technology is making us better people. So continue to my story. So when I was a kid, my dad used to work as a software developer. So inside my house, it was quite common to have like, so today we're going to disassemble the computer. Today we're going to learn that when the memory is not working very well, you have to get an eraser and clean it. Or maybe today we're going to install the new operational system, so we have 24 floppy disks, and let's do it until 3 a.m., and then one of them is going to fail, and we're going to do all of them all over again. And things like Winchester, words that we don't even hear nowadays, um, the motherboard. So these are the things I used to do like in my own house. And I thought everyone else did that too. I, I thought that was common. So more things about using computers. These games that I told you before I used to play, they were all offline. But when I was about nine, uh, there was internet connection in my house. It was, do you remember the sound of the dial-up connection? Yes, my nightmare. So I had to wait until midnight to use it, or Saturdays after 2 p.m., because these were the cheaper times. Uh, and then I had a passion for Japanese animation, and I wanted to talk to people about Japanese animation. But I had no friends. No one had computers close to my house. So I, I entered like online communities, for example, communities.msn.com or... Yahoo Messenger, where 
it's very funny that back then we had like these sort of like groups that you could talk with voice. That was very awesome. Um, so we had all these sorts of groups that I could talk to people, and then I was like, I want to share to the world about Sailor Moon. The world has to know about this. So I created my first page using front page, my local, local computer, and then I found this uh, communities.msn page, and I wanted to build it there. So they have this sort of like UI that you could copy and paste uh, GIF images. But then sometimes, since my connection was not that fast, when I pressed save, I would lose everything. So I quite liked the fact that I could save my own work and then try to submit, and in case it failed, I could try again. Or alternatively, we also had like you could use a UI or you could use some tags. And that's when I got started with a markup language. That's when, let's say, my passion for code started to grow. And then it was natural to me that I wanted to grow up and study something regarding computer. But coming, so if you see a bit of my history, like everyone was very supportive inside my house. But then I started to talk to people out there, and they were like, I don't think this is for you. When you get there, you're only going to see certain groups of people. There's going to be too much calculation, too, mo too much calculus. Look, you talk so well to people. Why don't you go and study something else? But like, there were so many people telling me not to do the thing I've always dreamed, telling me I didn't have the profile. But who are they to tell me that? So I say, if you have something that you really like, go for it. Don't let people let you down. Just go ahead and do it. So my first years of university, some of the things that people told me they were actually true. So um, when I joined, there were 40 men and six women. And I think that because I didn't graduate from my first university, I changed because I moved cities. So I think only two graduated out of them. So it was, th there were some things that, let's say, were not very cool, but some of them were very cool, and I'm very glad that I joined and I did that, and I didn't hear, listen to the voices telling me not to. And while I was in university, uh, someone told me that, especially this one person, told me that I didn't have the profile, he didn't know what I was doing there, and maybe I should try and do something else. And then that really got to me. I started to, like, my confidence was really low, and, but I had one professor that he used to come to me and, and just inspire me and try to mentor me and see the things that I wasn't doing so well, see how we could make that, uh, that improvement together. So one of the things he noticed is every time like, I was challenged with a problem, I wanted to just go to the IDE and start coding. I didn't really want to like, try and understand the problem. So he told me, look, I can see that you, you, you have a very good visual memory because he used to take up my notebook, the notes I used to take during classes. So let's do it like this. Every time you have a problem, you're going to model it, you're going to think of the solution, and you're going to actually write the code before you go to your computer. And that actually really helped me. He tried some other experiments too, like you're going to try and meditate before. Some of them were too much, but I really got a lot from what he told me. Sorry. And he talked about women role models. You're going to take pictures, right? <laughs> he talked about uh, women role models because back then in uni, I just had one uh, professor that was a woman and everyone around me was a man. And I couldn't write, you can't be what you can't see, right? So I was always thinking, yeah, maybe this is not for me. I like, I have this passion, but maybe not for me. But then he, I remember he, sh he showed me Grace Hopper. He showed me people doing the, the same things that I wanted to do. Like, if they can do it, you can do it too. And nowadays, there is a program created by Google called Women Tech Makers that help women like me in the past that didn't have access to directories or people that could be role models for them. So people can check nowadays uh, womentechmakers.com. And if you have anyone who is struggling the way I was, or maybe are not really in environments where they feel safe, they can check it there. And there are Slack groups, there, are YouTube there is a YouTube channel, there are resources for women to connect to each other. So I took this uh, screenshot from the, from the Women Tech Makers page. So there, are, there is a directory uh, with women from all around the world. So this is one of the programs. When I talk about diversity and inclusion, it's not only about women. This is one of the examples. So you can see women doing great things out there. So do share with, with people. And after 
all this, uh, let's say, my story with people telling me things were not going well, things were going well, people helping me out, sleepless nights, working very hard, all the hard work paid off. And I'm very happy to share a bit of this, that I became the first uh, woman intern um, at a Fiat Chrysler Automobiles in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, for the, for the human resources team. And then I moved to London and I became the first junior developer uh, at Resolver. And I became the first uh, woman GDG cloud organizer, which is a community that we talk about cloud. And we are one of the most active community in the world, if not the most, the, the one of the, the, like the best one. And I became the second women Google developer expert for, the, for actions in Google. So that's very exciting. Maybe if I had given up before, I wouldn't be where I am today. So that's pretty awesome. So, continue to talk about inclusion, but not so much about my life. Now, how can we make the lives of the users and developers who are also users easier? easier? So let's just think about some questions before we get started. You, you think, OK, so I should maybe make my web pages more inclusive. Oh, but come on, I don't, this, is, this is just going to take more time. This is, I don't know, I'm not, not getting paid enough. Why should I do this? So here are some questions for you to think that not everyone have the same opportunities and privileges as you. So let's go through some of the questions. Can you access the web easily? Is it easy for you? Can you buy your own devices? Do you have manuals available in your own language? Do you have time within all the things you do in your life, your work, your family, everything you do? Can you actually, maybe you're coming from a different um, area, you want to study computer, computer science or something tech related. Do you actually have all that time to do that? Maybe you didn't, you had to work way harder than the others, or maybe you actually really wanted that, but unfortunately because of the things you're going through, you couldn't do it. So let's try and think of all these people when we're creating new pieces of technology and hardware. So, another very important thing is work-life balance. Because before, I, I had this mindset. I don't know if it's like a Brazilian thing. But I used to think that like, the more I work, the more my employer is going to want me to be there and I'll be better than the others. So the, more, the less I sleep, the more I'm going to be an asset. But actually, nowadays, my bosses are like, Amanda, please stop coding. I don't want you to push code after work hours. Just go and work on your projects if you really want, but why don't you go and live your own life? And that actually helped me out, because now when I go to work, I'm not so burned out. I actually I had the time to be with the family and people I love, and I can actually work better. So I think work-life work balance is really important. Another thing is accessibility and usability. As I said before, not many people have all the privileges we do. Some of them have impairments and things that are getting on the way to have the full experience. But the web should be available for everyone. So let's try our best to make it a better place. Well, this is a photo I took. So I was just at Google I.O. last week, and I could see uh, uh, that we could use um, the voiceover to check how the pages are. And some of them are a nightmare to understand when you can't see the screen. You should really try one of these voice, vo voice reader screens. And here are some of the impairments that exist. I took this from um, the developers page about accessibility. So there are some people that can't use uh, computers the same way that most people do. So let's try to make it a better place for them. And also, maybe when I was in uni, we used to have these fights like, I use Linux, therefore I'm better than you. And when you go and have your own companies, you don't want, like, I don't want to work with people who are doing that other technology I don't do. But another thing you have to think is most of the times, you're not building products for yourself. You're building products for people. So if you have people who already worked with different technologies within your company, you're probably going to have testers inside of there. So people who come from different backgrounds, using different technologies, people who are not similar to you, they can really adapt to that. And so continue my story. The one thing, so people kept on asking me, so what's that one thing about technology you like? Because everyone has to have that one thing. And I was always like, like I don't have the one thing I like. I don't know, computer science is a very ample thing. 
But then on my, I think, penultimate semester in uni, I had a, a topic called artificial intelligence, and they taught us how to do a simple chatbot. There was no interface. We used something called AIML. And we could just, it was similar to HTML, but with some, let's say, additional tags. We could uh, do this conversational chatbot, but it wasn't responsive. There was no front end. And but I really liked the, the idea that I could automate conversations. And this is how I actually got started with uh, like my first interaction with um, a chatbot in general. But then I second to that, I started to use the Facebook Messenger gem because I, I was coding in Ruby. That was OK, too. But my true passion was when I found Dialogflow and Actions on Google. Because I really like this thing, inclusion. People don't have to know everything, read the entire platform before they get started. So if you know someone or if you yourself don't know how to code, you can get started very easily. So for instance, one app that I'm creating now that's super awesome to me is that I'm getting married in September. And people kept on, keep on asking me the same question over and over. So I thought, I'm going to create a chatbot. <laughs> and I'm going to have my guests be my testers. So I have them train the data for me, and it's becoming really awesome. I'm going to share when I'm finished, and you can use it in your own weddings. And another one was uh, the address expert. Uh, you can write the address, the, um, sorry, the postcode, and I give you the address. So there are like some silly projects that might not help anyone. There are some projects that might help your own life. You just have to get started and see. So. We, we are organizing many events around the world called Build Actions for Your Community. So if you're interested at all, they're free. You can go. Probably they have here in Vienna, too. And just use your knowledge to help people around you achieve what we can do, the, the best thing for our communities. And so, uh, so I started learning all of this. And then I started to teach people going al around the world. And this is some of the feedback that I got from people. Some of them, you can see, they didn't know how to code. But they could, like, in, in, let's say, in a matter of minutes, create something simple. And then from that, in iterate and start to work with code. So this is a very inclusive uh, piece of technology. So I strongly recommend it. And these are some photos that I took when I was traveling around the world. So the first one, uh, each one created a different one and then we presented for each other. And then the second one for, was for kids. Because we have to think about the persona when we're building uh, some conversational apps. And all of them like created robots and robotic pets. And then some of them like, my, so my robot is going to be specialized in everything. My robot, we're going to ask some questions to them. Then that one was a workshop in Cornwall. Those two ones were in London. We have some experts teach people. So that I found my true passion, and I can include people into that. Whatever it is for you, even if it's not chatbots, you can really make the difference out there. And my, I'd say my biggest idol out there, out there I don't know if you ever heard of Mitsuko. Could you ever heard of Mitsuko? Oh, only a few people. So this person, Steve, he's been working on this chatbot for 13 years. There's no machine learning. So he told me that every day, like, he wakes up in the morning, he reads the news, so he knows what people are going to ask. And it's really awesome. It already won that word that's very difficult to say, that prize, so he's really recognized out there. So like, even if you don't want to use a piece of technology with all the machine learning, you can build stuff with your own hands, too. I'd really recommend you checking out Mitsuku.com. So just some final words from everything I've been saying here. Be that change you want to see in the world. Go out there and create new things. Help people out there. Let's keep in touch. This is my, my, uh, the way you can get in contact with me. I'm very active on Twitter. I'll be around. I have stickers with me. Come say hi. Thank you.